Howdy, my name's Larian. I stumbled across a saddle a little bit earlier, decided that, well, that was a sign, and it was high time I got myself a horse, so I've been exploring. Unfortunately, that also involves a lot of zombies, a lot of uh, blizzes throwing snowballs of slowness at me, and this horrible, intimidating thing that I just spotted. Uh, my audio previously was bad, so we've uh, ditched it. I'm uh, recording over a little bit and trying to salvage what I can. And, uh, yeah, here we go. On with the show. That's not intimidating at all. This is horrifying. Someone has built a wicker man out here. I believe it's, uh, um... I think it's, uh, what's it called again? The, uh, witchery that adds all of that. But, wow. You know, I'm actually going to take these hay bales. Because there are a few things that use them. And if nothing else, they are interesting building blocks. Although I could make things out of, like, you know, Bumbles of bamboo instead. Still. 18 stacks of, uh, or 20 bundles of wheat. And, well, we found a red rock biome. That's always pretty. We can always do a lot of just nice decorative stuff with this, if nothing else. This has always been one of my favorite uh, building materials to come out of uh, uh, EBXO. So, happy to have found some so close to home. Horses! Perfect. Ooh, even uh, donkeys. 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 Um, donkeys can't wear horse armor. But they can carry chests, which is actually even better. So we are going to try to... Uh, I don't think the donkey likes me trying to give him the brain. That kind of makes sense. Let's go ahead and put all of... I got two zombie heads off of that group that I killed there. All right, so we're not going to be able to... Uh, to tame our... All right. Right, uh, oh, yeah, that's a, that's okay. We just keep getting on until he gives up. Stop walking in the cactus, buddy. Don't walk in the cactus. We will break this horse. And then we'll put a... Wait. Nope. Still not. Oh, there we go. Got him. Yep, see friendly. Okay. So now, let's go ahead and saddle him up. Thunk. To the saddle. And then to put the chest on him, you just shift and right click, or just right click on him with the chest, and there we go. So now, we have donkey power. So that's good. And we'll take him home and tie him up outside the house, and that'll be awesome. But this should make uh, further uh, exploration a little bit nicer. So, yeah, all right, got a donkey. Don't know really if it accomplishes much, but hey, we have one. And that'll help, uh, help us get around the world a little bit. I probably could grab the other, uh, well, you know what, I know where the other one is. So if anyone else wants it, we can come out and get a little bit later. I mean, they really move once they get going. And the nice thing is the smooth going up the one I block. 
merchants and homes down that way. So let's go ahead and yeah, he's yeah, he's he's able to move pretty well. All right, well we will just head back home and do something a little bit more productive. Dude's in my basement. Seriously? Ugh. Enderman. That door. My second greatest nemesis. Alrighty then. I've uh, cleaned up a few things. Let me go back downstairs here. I'll show you. Got rid of that, went ahead, and I've been meaning to do this since day one, but I finally went ahead and did it. I uh, moved the aqueous accumulator, put it between two water source blocks. That's what's required to make it actually produce decently. And uh, went ahead and piped water into a little tank to speed things up. This just costs some copper and lead and glass, so it's really cheap. And now we have full everything here. This is actually burning right now. I was smelting, but it looks like it just finished. Do I have more crushed copper? I do. And I really ought to smelt up some of this other stuff that I've crushed up. Uh, maybe some tin. Just to keep the uh, keep that from wasting the fuel that I put in there. Okay, that's good. All right. We're below max. All right. Uh, the other thing is uh, I'm really, really having problems with inventory space right now, so I made uh, four more copper chests. They're uh, five rows instead of three rows for a normal chest, six rows for an iron chest, so they're almost as good as iron. And, uh, well, there they are. So I'm going to divide things up like I usually do, which is I usually have a machine components chest, I usually have a metal chest, I usually have a food chest, um, wood, uh, I will usually have something for uh, mob drops, something for uh, other building materials. So let's get, for instance, this will be mob drops here put that in there and then just any corpse drops I get at all go in that box any I don't like how that fur sapling is hanging out we'll have to label that differently but I'm gonna finish sorting this up uh, get things cleaned up and then either go uh, go visit my compatriot uh, Melinar is on the server right now or build some more machines because putting together a sawmill uh, in conjunction with some automated tree farming means a lot of energy. I guess one of the other things I probably want to do is make some barrels. But uh, So I'm going to finish sorting inventory real quick. Uh, that Enderman just uh, distracted me. Uh, so yeah, be right back. All right, we are back, and I'm done sorting and got rid of my initial chest, finally. So everything is sort of in containers to choice. One thing that I notice, however, is I don't have a cobblestone box. And that's because, well, I've actually been running short on cobbles. And so we're going to solve that problem by building an igneous extruder. which is the machine that is a cobble gen in a box. So it's going to require a piston, a machine frame, a servo, and some tin. The machine frame is just some iron and some glass er, and a gold. So let's go ahead and make that first. I need a piston. Thankfully, I've been stealing those from the neighbors already. All right, can't sleep. So a piston, I need some glass, which is a pretty thing, a decorative block. I'm going to actually need... <laughs> He's uh, 
He's surrounded by monsters right now at his place. Uh, I need to cook some sand, I guess it is. Uh, let's get... We don't have wholesale sand right now, so we're having to be a little bit uh, cautious with that. But hey, it's uh, it's something. We're making progress on things. And of course, it ejects them into the adjacent box right now. But that's all right. Okay. So we also need iron. We need iron and uh, tin, isn't it? I think just two tin bars. Yeah, two tin bars, four iron, and a gold for that. Plus, I need two more iron and two more glass for the uh, servo. So let's get two more iron. I actually need to cook some more iron. Well, that's fine. We will cook some more iron. And we will get some redstone out. Let's go ahead and build this real quick. We've got our machine frame. We've got our piston. Oh, we need two more glass, even two more glass. Ugh. It's trying to make me have to go digging sand. I actually need a bunch of sand to build a uh, to build a coke oven. But that can wait. Mostly I use the coke oven as a, uh, a way of getting high density fuel. Since it upgrades all of our coal for us. Okay, so we got that. We need to get the other piece of iron out. There we go. All right, let's make the servo real quick, which is just going to be this, I believe the recipe said it was. It is. Great. And now servo, glass, glass, machine frame, piston, tin, tin, gets us our extruder. We're going to go ahead and put this extruder downstairs. I may as well put it over here. We'll do it here. We'll do it just here and going straight down into a, uh, a chest below it. And we'll go ahead and do a, we'll do an item duct because I don't think I've made any of those yet. I've made liquiducts, fluiducts, they renamed them, fluiducts, and some basic uh, energy conduit. The item ducts are just lead. Uh, I think dryads are okay if you cut trees. They're pretty passive. But let's get an item duct. Which is, I believe, okay, tin and lead. Alright, so let's go ahead and get that tin and that lead. That may be the last piece of I need to do some. I need to process all of this metal because I have tons of this stuff that needs uh, that needs grinding and smelting. But I will do that off camera so as not to annoy people too grossly. Now the other thing that I need is I need to make some barrels. I have several spare chests, so we'll make both of those into barrels. One of them is going to be a barrel for uh, the cobble that we'll go ahead and get going downstairs. But I'm not really sure what the other one's going to be for, but I figure I may as well make them in batches, since it doesn't make sense otherwise. So, plank, barrel, and then we need some wood here. Ah, there we go. See, I love how it shows that above it. It's just cool. But let's go ahead and get the other barrel out too. Okay. And we can go ahead and, you know, take this wood out here. And put it back in there. Alright, so the first barrel, we're going to go downstairs into the extruder. Go ahead and then take the item duct underneath it. Just have that there. Going that direction. 
And that's all there is to it for that. Uh, we need to make sure that we actually put some water and some uh, some lava in that. So hit it with water, and it should have water now in it. But I need to get some lava, and for that we go visit the uh, the neighborhood inferno. So as soon as that is down here, so I will go get some lava and be right. And lava acquired after a actually very uneventful uh, trip into the nether. I got uh, picked up some metal, didn't aggro a single piggy, I didn't have anything blow up, didn't fall and die. I am, however, starving, so we'll have to fix that in a second. But uh, uh, pretty rocks, pretty rocks, pretty rocks. Netherrack is a pretty rock. Okay. So let's go ahead and put that lava in place and get the uh, the extruder started. It's not very fast, but it's not slow either. So that just should just start dumping out. There we go, 13, 14, 15. It's, a, it's like two seconds per, and it just goes. Eventually, if we get some sort of lava supply or things, we can turn that into uh, a furnace that generates uh, obsidian for us or whatever. Which would actually be really cool, being able to, because uh, with, uh, yeah, you, you you can make it do obsidian, but it consumes a whole bucket of lava, so we have to be able to generate lava first, and generating lava is never fuel efficient. Just superheating cobbles up to lava, temperature is bad. Anyhow, let's go ahead and dump this off, so that's pretty cool, we've got a whole bunch of stuff that needs processing. We have another barrel that I still haven't decided what I'm going to use it for. I'm going to, for now, just... Actually, I'm going to leave it in the in the decorative box. Because that's also where storage things go. And I think I am going to visit uh, the neighbors. I'm going to go uh, see about meeting up with... Uh, with Mr. Melinar, uh, Mr. S. M. Barbour, who is the uh, uh, he's the author of MC Updater, which is how I know him. I've uh, contributed uh, some code to the project, so. I'm probably going to go over, visit him, see if we can get him in on a call, and uh, probably work over at his place for the rest of the episode. I will be back as soon as I figure out where he's set up shop, and I believe he's getting started on some Ars Magica, maybe, or maybe some early Thomcraft, but I haven't touched either of those, so that sounds pretty interesting. I will be right back shortly. You hear that? That is the sound of no sound effects. Skype ruins everything. And uh, what happened was I went a kilometer and a half over the ocean, had to take multiple trips, broken boats. It was quite exciting, and, well, actually, it was really boring. Mostly I killed some squid on the way. That was the highlight of the trip. Uh, but I got out here, and, uh, you know, we got on the Skype call, and things weren't working. Uh, this is an Ars Magica pool with uh that he actually moved over there in a wooden bucket apparently you can move those in wooden buckets so that's pretty cool and uh i am going to get started on some ars magica here and uh you do this by crafting a book and so i had made a book beforehand on my way there on at home before i left so i just plunk it in here in this item frame uh in and hope for the best. There's supposed to be particles that happen, and I'm all excited to witness the particles. I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. There's particles, and particles, and particles. 30 seconds later, it finally decided that it was done waiting for us, and shows the cool effect, and poof, turns into a book. I have problems getting it out of the item frame, and I have the, uh, well, no I don't, because it went flying. But uh, I have the, the Secrets of the Arcane, I have unlocked them, 
and I have the Arcane Compendium. This is like the Thaumonomicon, except for Ars Magica, and it's really, really dense. There's just so many words in there, it takes forever to figure uh, any of this stuff out. And so I'm going to be doing a lot of reading. We, uh, we realize very quickly that one of the things that we need is... Uh, oh, first, some presents. Brought a Thaumonomicon and some ink uh, for Melinar. But, uh, yeah, we realize very quickly that what we want uh, in Ars Magica is the first machine. And that requires a resource that I haven't ever seen called Blue Topaz. And so we need to set up some mining. And what what happens next for the last, uh, next little bit? Uh, the two of us went mining. And uh, some interesting things happened. And... Yeah, so we're just kind of going to skip ahead because there's not really a lot I can show you that's worth, you know, trying to talk over and do a secondhand commentary track on with no audio. So we'll just uh, we'll just zoom ahead here, uh, get set up, call this an episode. My name's Ilarian. Thanks for watching. I am going to be back with a very, very brief... Uh, episode 12 which will be sort of like this with uh with me attempting to salvage some footage of uh, melanar and myself uh, mining and uh starting to get uh, set up on uh blah, on ours magica wait i remembered something While we were still setting up i uh, got impatient and decided i was going to go explore for a little bit while uh, waiting for uh, Melinar to uh, get something ready, and I noticed that he had uh, some taint just to the north of his place, and I figured, I'm going to go check this out. And, well, this is the strongest taint biome I've ever seen. Normally, it's it's not that bad. The, the ground's a little poisonous, but wait! Tentacle monsters. There's... and... 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 and that... that vampiric-looking mist coming after me, and... Clearly kind of freaking out the, uh, well, it looked like it freaked out the dryad a little bit. But the problem with fighting something like this is, wait, I th yeah, see, you hit it, and you can't tell exactly where it is, and, and hitting it is, is hard, and and, and so you, I, I don't know what it, I guess I was, well, I guess it weakens you, which is great, because now you do less damage when you're hitting this thing, and, and, and you don't, yeah, I, and, and that was it. And it's like, is is it over? I don't, I don't know. So I've I've never encountered one of those before. So that was interesting. And there's clearly more. And we're just not going to mess with that place for a while. But resources are gathered. We're in a secure underground location down here. I, I don't know why I decided to jump back out again. I guess to just look before, commit. You know, get one last look at the sunshine. Made myself several uh, T-Construct stone picks just so I could plow through things. And, uh, well, let the digging begin. My name's Alarian. Uh, sorry about that. We'll, uh, we'll try to avoid this uh, problem in the future. But uh, we will be back uh, shortly with, uh, with the results of this little excursion. So we will see you later. Bye-bye.